If you clicked on this video, you're probably wondering why China censors everything. And you're probably hoping that I'll give you lots of juicy examples of how China controls the internet and media here. And I will give a few, but what I really want to talk about is why they control everything. In my last video, I talked about freedom and censorship. Of course, this generated a lot of comments. But what I found most interesting is how some of the people in the comments jumped to conclusions and didn't actually listen to what I said. Most people wanted to explain to me why China censors everything and even seemed to blame the US for China's censorship. So let's listen to what I actually said in the last video again and then we can talk about why China censors content and what happens and what problems arise when we jump to conclusions. But for the most part, on the day-to-day -day basis, living in China isn't too different than in the US. There are two big differences here in China, which are freedom of speech and censorship on the internet. Because I make videos about China and I live in China, I'm a little bit more concerned about what I say on camera. Also, because I use the internet every day, just like everyone else, internet censorship is noticeable. Many sites are blocked and you have to use a VPN to access most of the internet. Overall, my views have changed on freedoms in China, from this is a terrible country and they lock everyone up to, on a day-to-day -day basis, it's pretty normal. But they are much stricter on freedom of speech, protests, and internet censorship. And this is where you feel it kind of more on a day-to-day -day basis. As you can see from that last clip, I didn't talk about why China censors content in China, and I didn't even comment on if I thought it was right or wrong. But many people jumped to the conclusion that because I was saying it was more noticeable here in China, that I think the US is better and has less censorship or more freedoms. So in this video, I wanna talk about some of the problems that arise when we jump to conclusions. But first, let's talk about why China censors content here. Many of the comments pointed out China has a large population that has access to the internet. Around 70% of China's 1.4 billion people have access to the internet, but only 240 million people in China have received higher education so far, according to the Ministry of Education. While most people have received the nine-year compulsory education required by law, China's overall population can still be considered undereducated. Higher education doesn't mean you're less susceptible to fake news, but it should provide you with the critical thinking skills needed to combat the most obvious lies. Many of the people in the comments argued that China is protecting its population from misinformation campaigns from the US or other hostile media. The argument is Chinese people aren't educated enough to discern facts from lies. While I can agree with this point to some extent, I don't agree with it entirely because it doesn't account for internal censorship. If the government is only concerned about outside forces, why does it censor its own media like CGTN or Xinhua? Now, before you start commenting that other countries also censor content and that it's not just China, listen to what I'm actually saying. Of course, other countries censor content. Last year in the US, from July 2021 to June 2022, there was over 2,500 instances of individual books being banned, affecting more than 1,648 unique book titles. Book bans and even book burnings are some of the oldest forms of censorship. And the World Press Freedom Index 2021 shows that journalism is completely blocked or severely restricted in 73 countries and restricted in 59 others. According to the report, Iran is ranked 174th, Russia is ranked 150th, China is ranked 177th, Saudi Arabia is ranked 170th, Egypt is ranked 166th, and Syria is ranked 173rd. What this report shows us is that restrictions on press is the norm, not the exception. Of the 180 countries this report looked at, 132 restrict press freedoms. Saudi Arabia is ranked almost the same as China on this list, yet America and Western allies rarely vilify the Saudi government. The point I'm making is every country and media platform censors or promotes content based on their own needs or agendas. We, as individuals and media consumers, have to understand why something is being censored or promoted. China will promote the poverty alleviation efforts that they've made, but downplay the relocation of villagers. The US will promote the idea of forced labor in Chinese factories, but downplay the fact that these factories are producing US goods. Because of all this censorship and misinformation, it becomes our job as consumers to determine what is fact or fiction. This is unfortunate because that requires critical thinking and research. 
and most of us don't have the time or energy to figure out what is real or fake. It is much easier to read a headline that fits with our worldview and say, yes, I agree with that point. China is bad, Iran is bad, India is bad, this or that is bad. Which brings us to the next point, which is jumping to conclusions. On the last video, many people commented that my opinion was pretty balanced and pretty unbiased, which I appreciate, and I want to say thank you for commenting and watching my videos. But a few people had a different take. Many jumped to conclusions saying I don't know anything about China's reasons for censorship and that they need to do it for the sake of the people. All I was really saying is that it is more noticeable here, not commenting on if it's right, wrong, or justified. It is not my place to say if it's right or wrong, but I do have an opinion about it. Seeing how powerful media and social media can be when it's weaponized by a government or a group of people really scares me. A great example was the conflict in Myanmar a few years back. Facebook was used by different groups to incite violence against the Rohingya people creating a humanitarian crisis in Myanmar and Bangladesh. This conflict impacted millions of people and was mostly fueled by social media groups in posts. Media and social media can have real world consequences which is why brands pay millions of dollars every year for influencers. What we consume influences how we view the world and the people around us. This is why it's important to control what we consume and why governments also try to control what we consume. Censorship has been around since the beginning of storytelling and information sharing and I don't think that it's going to go away anytime soon. I personally would like to see less censorship, but I understand countries like China value social stability above all else and dissent often leads to social unrest. Many countries have openly talked about misinformation campaigns and how their government uses different agencies to promote or censor information. Have we ever tried to meddle in other countries' elections? Oh, probably, but uh, it was for the good of the system in order to avoid the communists from taking yeah. over. For example, in Europe, uh, uh, in 47, 48, 49, uh, the Greeks and the Italians, we... We don't do CIA. that now, though. We don't mess around other people's well, elections, yeah? Mm, nom, 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 nom. <laughs> Only for a very good Can cause. Can you do that? Do a Vine video on a former CIA director. Only for a very good cause in okay. the interests of democracy. Right. Information is power, and controlling information is powerful, which is why countries censor content. Imagine if 1 or 2% of China's population started to believe in something like Q. That would be around 14 to 28 million people. On January 6, we all watched in horror while a group of a few thousand people wrecked havoc on the Capitol building in D.C. This riot shocked the world and made many people question America's democracy. Imagine if the US or any other hostile media company was able to create that type of chaos in China. I like to believe the world is a good place and people normally do what is right, but after seeing how quickly, I mean within four to five years, people in the US were misled and misinformed makes me question social media and news agencies. There has always been dissent in the US and it often makes the system stronger. But recently fake news, conspiracies, and misinformation campaigns from Russia and other countries shows how dangerous it can be to have little or no censorship. Don't misunderstand me again in this video. I'm not advocating for censorship, but I do understand why some countries are leaning more and more towards censorship. In the end, I think it's up to each individual to decide for themselves what to believe and what to consume. But given the current social media news climate, I don't think we'll see less censorship. I actually expect to see more censorship in the future as platforms and governments try to scrub content that goes against their policies or profit. What do you think? Do you think China is wrong for censoring content? Do you think every country does it, so why should it be different in China? And do you think we'll see more in the future? Let me know in a comment below. I like to read most of the comments. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. We are almost at 30,000 subscribers, so hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video.